All right, here we are with another episode of How to Break It. This is part two of the Cloud Shell video. Now that we've got it all put together and assembled, uh, we're going to add the software to it because what good is hardware without software? So I'm going to be using the EMMC memory module. I have a 16 gig one here. Don't really need the EMMC memory for this project. You can use a micro SD card. Just make sure that if you are using the micro SD card, uh, you've got this little guy. There's a switch on the side uh, Make sure that that is flipped over to micro SD same thing for EMMC make sure that it's just set to the right one Otherwise, it won't boot All right so step one is uh, pretty easy Grab a sip of Java and let's break it All right, so I've compiled a list of instructions here. Um, basically, it's what I do to make sure that we get this working properly. Um, and we're gonna need to open up the terminal first. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to make sure that we have the image. So we're going to wget, and I'll have this file. Um, I'll have these instructions somewhere. You can access them very easily. So wget, it's going to download that image there. And that may take a moment. Now, normally you want to make sure with an MD5 sum that uh, you got the right image and it didn't get corrupted, but I'm going to assume that it was fine. And now we're going to unzip or uncompress the image using this command here, unxz, and then the Ubuntu image. That's going to decompress the image for us. Next, you want to insert your memory, whether it's micro SD or your EMMC card, that does not matter. And you want to check to make sure that you're going to be affecting the proper disk. You don't want to use the, the commands we're going to use on uh, you know, a, a disk that isn't the right one because it will screw your disks up. And yeah, so we're going to do a sudo fdisk minus L and here that will ask us for our password and we look for the logical disk and we have right here 14.6 gig because I have a 16 gig micro or EMMC card we're looking at dev slash SDC so over here I'm going to change that to C for me and for good measure we want to do a sudo umount slash dev slash SDC to make sure that uh, the drive is unmounted all right, and now we have to copy the image that we have over to our uh, SD card, or sorry, to, to the memory card. So we're going to do a sudo dd if, and if is the image that you're going to use to write, and then of specifies the location that you're going to write that data to. So dev slash sdc. And we want this to be copied in a uh, in chunk sizes of one meg. Um, con equals f sync. I'm not sure what that one does, honestly. But maybe you can let me know in the the comments. And it was just part of the uh, instructions on the wiki. And we want a status equals progress so that we can see what's going on. And then once it's done, we want to sudo sync and press enter. That should copy over. All right, now that that is copied over, we are okay to take the memory out of the computer and plug it in. To where it goes now for the EMMC memory it goes right on top but if you're doing micro SD memory that's going to go right in there basically on the other side of the board from the EMMC memory slot all right now what you want to do I don't have a little pin but take a little pin little sim card tool um, Basically anything really tiny and uh, that you can use to poke. Um, 
and for RAID 0, which is the method that we're going to use for um, uh, this video, you want to have both of these dip switches set to the up position, which is on. And so what you need to do to make sure that the XU4 is going to pick up on um, our RAID configuration, there's a little button right here. We have to hold that while we apply the power. So we're going to hold that, plug this in. You can hear it spinning up. I hold it for about three, four seconds. I'm not that picky. And then it's gonna turn on. Now, once we turn it on, we wanna wait a minute, maybe two minutes for it to, uh, to get started up and get settled. Um, and then after that, we're gonna remove the power, plug it back in, and we should be able then to find, uh, to find where it is on our network. I think it's been long enough, so I'm going to unplug it. Now it's important to know that at this point the, the fan on the back is not going to be spinning. Um, you didn't do anything wrong. If the fan's not running, it shouldn't be. We're going to install that in just a minute. Plug it back in. Wait a minute or so for it to boot up. Now for finding out what the IP address of our Cloud Shell 2 here is on our network, I'm going to use an application called Angry IP Scanner. If you do a quick Google, wobbly windows. If you do a quick Google for uh, Angry IP Scanner, you can find it. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Of course, I'm running with uh, Ubuntu 18 something. I'm not sure if I'm updated. I'm sure I'm updated. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Uh, Angry IP Scanner is great. It's going to detect your IP range, essentially. And uh, all you need to do is click start and it's going to scan your entire network um, between those two different IP ranges and figure out which is which. Now, it's not showing it right now. It should have the host name of Odroid. I don't know why it doesn't. Uh, but I know uh, since I set this up already and worked through the process, um, I've actually given this Odroid a static IP of 192.168.0.109. I just wanted to show going through. Um, so now we take that IP address and we want to SSH. I'm going to clear this up. All right, now we want to SSH with the root account at 192.168.0.109. Now that might be different for you, but through Angry IP Scanner, you, you'll find out what your IP address is. So use whatever IP for your Odroid is. It's gonna ask you, do you trust the fingerprint? Just type yes. All right, now it added the fingerprint. Um, the password is Odroid, O-D-R-O-I-D. That's the default password. Now, now that we're in, the first thing we wanna do is update and make sure that we've got all the updates. That's basically pretty important. Um, since we're root, we do not need sudo. Uh, apt get update and apt get upgrade and apt get dist upgrade. This will take a few minutes and uh, during the process you may need to press the Y key to let it know that you want it to update. All right, 82 megs of updates. All right, now that the software updates are done, we want to do the system update. Just press yes. Because earlier we chained together the uh, apt get update, apt get upgrade, and apt get dist upgrade. All right, now this is basically the end of the upgrade. Your boot.ini has changed, blah, blah, blah. All right, clear, and we're back. Now we want to make sure that the kernel update happened which we do uname minus r, and we see with this output 4.9.28-38 that it did not update. So um, we have to use this command here, apt get install linux-image-xu3. Even though we're on the xu4, this is, this is what we do. This is gonna upgrade us to kernel 4.14, um, and it's going to try to scare you uh, into not doing the update, but do it anyway, it's fine. All right, we press yes again to tell it to go. Here we are. 
you're running kernel version blah 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 and you're removing it and blah 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 uh, it's very dangerous if at all in doubt and click yes if you know what you're doing uh, click no we don't exactly know what we're doing but we know this is what we got to do so let's click no and now since we did a kernel level update we want to reboot we want to SSH back into the device with the same SSH root at the IP address and the same password odroid. And now, when we run uname minus r, it's going to tell us that we have our current kernel, which is 4.14.73 136. That's a little newer than 4.9, and uh, it should perform a little better. It's at this stage that I like to install the LCD and the fan. So we're actually going to come over to the wiki over here. God, I love wobbly windows. And uh, we'll find the link for this in the description as well. And we're just going to copy and paste from one side to the other. First, we add the repository that the software is stored in. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. And next, we want to do an apt-get update. That makes sure that we've updated the lists of where the software is. You probably know that. And we want to apt-get install odroid. I'm just going to copy it because I've made a typo. So apt-get install odroid cloud shell fan. Yes, we want to install that. And then that's done. Now we want to install the Cloud Shell LCD. So copy or, or type, whatever you prefer. Type that in. We do want to install that. And now when we reboot, we should see the display on the front. It's the most adorable little display. It's going to show us a bunch of information, our kernel version, the Ubuntu version, um, how much CPU we're using, what the temperature of the CPU is, the speed of our CPU, our IP address and connection speed. Now it's not showing the drive yet because we haven't actually mounted the drive. Um, we're going to get to that in the very next step. So now let's SSH back in because when we reboot the connection is closed. And we want to fdisk minus L. That's going to show us all of our drives. We did that earlier. Now I have two six terabyte drives in here, so I'm looking for something just shy of 12 terabytes. And here we have uh, SDA, dev slash dev slash SDA at 10.9 terabytes. I know that's the one I want because nothing else is even remotely that big. So I'm going to change this Y to an A. All right, now step one is we want to zero out the disk, basically format it. So we're going to use DD again. And we're going to if slash dev slash zero. So that basically says that we're going to clear the drive of all of its, all of its data. This will wipe your data. This is going to blast it all. It's all zeros. It's gone. It's not going to work anymore. Well, it's going to work. We're going to make it work. We're just getting rid of all the data if necessary. Don't worry about it or worry about it. Back up your data first. If, if there's data on the disks, there shouldn't be. doesn't matter. And then we of slash dev slash SDA because that's the disk that we want to affect. We want to do this with a byte size of 512 and count is one. That's what we want to do. So click enter. Not a problem. That's done. And now we have to add a file system, make file system, which is mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash sda. Boom. It says it contains an ext4 file system. Again, I've already done this. Um, but yes, I'd like to proceed anyway. All right. Now that the drives are formatted, we want to make a mount point for them to be mounted to. So we're going to use mkdir 
minus p slash media slash hdd. You can use whatever you like here. This is just what I'm using. Boom. And now we want to make sure that the drive mounts every time that we boot. So we have to open our fstab nano slash etc slash fstab. And in here, we want to paste our instructions at the bottom. So here we have the drive that we're mounting, where we're mounting it to, the file system. It's using defaults 01. I don't understand all of it, but that's what we do. Now we want to control X to get out of nano. We do want to save the changes, so press Y and then press enter. And now it's time to create an account that's actually going to access all of this. Um, again, I copied most of this from the official guide. Uh, so this essentially tells us to send the output to nowhere so it's not going to bother up our screen. Um, now we want the user add command. Um, so user add the username, um, the minus D parameter does something. Um, media HDD is the home and that's our output. Set a password for the account. This is going to be the password used to access your share, so make sure to remember it. And next we want to take ownership and change the permissions of the mounted drives. So that's for the ch own cloud shell or whatever you named the user. Uh, minus capital R for recursive slash media slash HDD. And now we want to change the permissions to chmod 755. Those are basically almost god permissions. Minus R again to be recursive. And then the mount point that we made. Now that that's done, we want to apt get install Samba. And that's going to be our sharing service. It's going to add 56 megs of software. All right, and now let's clear this up again. We want to edit our uh, samba or smb.conf file. So we're going to use nano slash etc slash samba and smb.conf. Scroll down a little bit until you find global between square brackets. And we're going to paste this information right here. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And then page down all the way to the bottom. And we're going to add this information. This configures the Samba sharing service to run at a good speed and tells everything what to do, where to go. Again, since we're in Nano, control X to exit. It's gonna ask if you'd like to save, so press Y and then just press enter to overwrite that file. We're going to reboot. Isn't that much quieter? And now that we're booted with everything, we can see the information on the screen. We have 11 terabytes free. It's connected at 1,000 uh, megabits per second with the IP. It's good to go. Now we just have to set up the share on our computers and uh, we should be good to read and write to the drives. Congratulations.